بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آر ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف سسٹم پروگرامنگ وتھ لینکس ان دا لاسٹ سیشن وی ٹاک اباؤٹ سنکرونائزیشن پریمیٹیوس میوٹکس اینڈ کنڈیشن ویریبلس دیٹ آر یوز فار سنکرونائزیشن امنگ تھریڈس ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا یوز آف سیما فورس اینڈ دیئر یوزیج امنگ تھریڈس ایز ویل ایز امنگ پروسیسز دس لائٹ شوز دا ایجنڈا آف today's session well these students semaphores are a kind of generalized locks defined by dextra in late 60s it is a primitive used to provide synchronization between various processes or between various threads of a process it can be considered as an integer variable with three differences When you create a semaphore, you, in, you can initialize it to any integer value, but after that you can perform two operations on it, increment and decrement. When a process or thread decrements the semaphore, if the semaphore currently has the value 0, then the thread blocks until the value of the semaphore value rises above 0. When a process or thread increments the semaphore, If there are other threads waiting, one of the waiting threads gets unblocked. And which one out of those gets unblocked, that depends whether it is a strong semaphore or a weak semaphore. Of course, in case of strong semaphores, there is a queue maintained and the oldest process or threads gets activated. And in case of weak semaphores, a process or thread is selected at random for execution well this slide gives a comparison between mutex condition variables and semaphores uh, we all know that a mutex can have only two values 0 or 1 and is used to achieve mutual exclusion while semaphores can also be used as counting semaphores in order to access a shared pool of resources A mutex must always be unlocked by the thread that locked the mutex. Whereas a semaphore post need not to be performed by the same thread that did the semaphore wait. When a condition variable is signaled, if no thread is waiting for this condition variable, the signal is lost. While a semaphore post is always remembered. Out of various synchronization techniques, The only function that can be called from a signal handler is semaphore post. So we can say that mutexes are optimized for locking, condition variables are optimized for waiting, and semaphore can do both. Well, dear students, to implement the semaphores, we can either use the system 5 API or the POS6 API, which is a newer one. In today's session, we will talk about the POS6 API. In POS6 API, we can create and use two different types of semaphores. The named semaphores. In case of named semaphores, sem open call is used to create a new semaphore or open an existing one. It is identified by a name. And on Linux, these are created as files in the dev and inside the dev in the shm subdirectory multiple processes or threads knowing that name can use these calls that is sem wait sem post try wait get value as per the logic of the program and finally close the semaphore and may delete it using the sem unlink call The other type of POSIX semaphore are unnamed or memory based semaphore. We can use sem init call to create or initialize a memory based semaphore. To share an unnamed semaphore among threads of a process, it needs to be created in, in a global variable. Or maybe in a variable uh, declared or created inside the heap. To share an unnamed semaphore among multiple processes, it must be placed in a shared memory region once created 
multiple processes or threads can have uh, can use these same wait and same post calls as per the program logic and when the semaphore is no longer required uh, and before the memory in which it is located is deallocated the semaphore must be destroyed using the sem destroy call let us study these two types one by one and let us first talk about the named semaphores well as i have already said that the named semaphores are created as files inside the div shm subdirectory for example uh, a semaphore with the name of forward slash name one once created will have a name of sem dot name one whatever name you you gave to that semaphore one process or thread can create this semaphore while other processes or threads knowing the name can simply open the semaphore and later can use the same wait and same post call as per the program logic before we go to the linux terminal uh, let us quickly see how these calls actually work Well, we can use a sem open call to create a named semaphore. The semaphore will be created by, by this name inside the forward slash div forward slash shm subdirectory. This o flag is mostly o create, and if you specify o create over here, you need to give two more arguments. The mode arguments specify the permissions, and the value arguments specify the initial value of the new semaphore in case of binary semaphores you can specify 0 or 1 over here whereas in case of counting semaphores you can specify a value greater than 1 over here once created uh, you can always use the same weight same post and same close calls on this semaphore well same weight library call this call actually decrements the semaphore pointed to by, by this argument sem. If the semaphore value is greater than zero, then the decrement proceeds and the function returns immediately. If the semaphore currently has the value of zero, then the call blocks until the value of semaphore value uh, until the value of the semaphore rises above zero. And on the contrary, this sem post uh, this calls increment the semaphore pointed to by this argument sem. And if the semaphore's value becomes greater than zero, then another process or thread blocked on this semaphore will be woken up and proceed to lock the semaphore. Well, I hope uh, the concept is clear. Uh, I, I'm not going into the details of uh, how these are implemented as we all have studied this inside the operating system concept course. Similarly, this uh, sem try wait and sem get value, these two functions can also be used. This try wait is just a non-blocking version of the wait call and this get value can be used to uh, get the current value of the semaphore into, into this variable. And POSIX permits two possibilities for this value. Uh, either zero is returned or maybe a negative number showing the count of block threads. In case of Linux, you will always find a zero over here. And finally, uh, sem close. Uh, sem folds are normally closed automatically on process termination, uh, but you can close a named sem for using the sem close library call. Uh, remember, closing a named sem for does not remove it from the system as they are uh, kernel persistent. So, to remove the named sem for from the system, you must use the unlink call, and you you need to pass this the same name that you have used in the same open call of course on on the shell you can see uh, the files that exist in the div shm directory and you can delete those files with the rm command as well okay dear students let us move on to the linux terminal to see the proof of uh, the concepts uh, that i've discussed so far uh, remember uh, make it your habit to review the main pages of the system and library calls before using them Although I have discussed uh, a bit, but to make it a habit, let me go through them one by one. The first page you should uh, view is 
the SEM overview man page from chapter 7 which will describe the differences between the named and the unnamed semaphores. SEM open used to uh, create a named semaphore. SEM wait, try wait and timed wait. Uh, well, this try wait is the blocking version of SEM wait and this timed wait specifies a limit on the amount of time that the card should block if decrement can't be immediately performed. But do read the man page for details and let me show you SEM post as well quickly. Use to unlock a semaphore. Increment is performed on the semaphore. Similarly, SEM underscore get value is used to get the value of the semaphore. SEM underscore close is used by a process to close a semaphore. If you don't do it and the process terminates, the semaphore is automatically closed. However, a semaphore is not deleted automatically. You have to use the SEM unlink call. Sorry, SEM underscore unlink call to remove a named semaphore. Okay, let me clear screen. Let us see a sample program, race threads dot C. Okay. Well, dear students, this is the same program that we have seen in previous session of uh, synchronization among threads. Uh, the main thread creates uh, two threads and each increment and decrement the global variable uh, balance um, about 100 million times. And of course, uh, this occurs concurrently, so a race condition occurs, and we all have seen this program, the result will not be zero. Let me compile this program, race threads.c, and you see there is a race condition that exists, we get different answers, so we need to identify the critical section in the two threads, and we need to solve it using named semaphore this time. So this is a solution of that program. Uh, what I have done is uh, we have created a global variable of type sem underscore t. Uh, I have created it globally so that both the threads can access this variable. Uh, I have used sem open call uh, to create a named semaphore and this is the name which I have mentioned remember the name should be forward slash some number of characters and the number of characters should be uh, 251 not more than 251 and because the name is preceded with sem dot we will see it shortly uh, okay this uh, is going to be created these are the permissions and this is the initial value because we want to achieve mutual exclusion uh, so that's why I have created with the value of 1. Fine. So the two threads are created. And over here, uh, inside the thread functions, we have identified the critical section. Uh, this one. So before entering the critical section, a thread calls sem wait. And after exiting from the critical section, the thread calls sem post. And once we are done with these two, functions by the threads inside the main I am calling sem close and then I'm using sem unlink uh, remember dear students uh, to keep the code simple I have not done any error handling uh, in this program or in other programs but I strongly recommend whenever you program do receive the return values of of the function calls and check them for errors let us compile and run this program solution raise threads.c let me link it with the threading library and this time once I run it you will see we will get a value of zero no matter how many times I run it I will get the correct result so we have successfully solved the critical section problem among threads using named semaphore now let us extend the same program logic and see a program in which two processes enter in a race condition. Race underscore processes dot C.
well over here you can see we have used a fork to create a child process and the child process calls the increment function while the parent function calls the decrement function and both execute concurrently and the increment and decrement functions are same as as we have seen before and of course over here the uh, after decrementing the parent waits uh, if a child has done its task before the parent the point to be noted uh, over here is that this balance variable yes this balance variable is uh, has to be shared among the two processes uh, so we have created this balance variable in the shared memory region using the shm get call and after that the parent is uh, attaching uh, the shared memory region in its address space using the shm at call and initializing the value of balance to to zero and this we have seen in our previous session uh, we have talked about uh, the shared memory region in the previous session and we have seen that after a process performs a fork the child process inherits the shared memory of its parent hence this balance variable is shared among both the parent and the child process and afterwards of course uh, the child and as well as the parent both are detaching this memory segment and finally we are we are deleting that memory segment i hope the code is clear if you are not comfortable with the shared memory programming please go through the session of programming with the shared memory let me compile this program raise processes.c let me execute it so there exists a race condition the answer is not coming zero okay so let us solve it now using uh, using named semaphores let me clear screen show you the code okay so this is the same code i will just discuss the differences between the previous and this program uh, we have created the sem underscore t type of pointer globally we have used sem open to create the named semaphore and initialize it to the value of one to achieve mutual exclusion okay so this is the balance variable created in the shared memory the parent process do a fork and the parent process or the child process do an increment and the parent process do a decrement as we have seen in the previous code as well and uh, over here you can see we have identified the critical section and before entering the critical section each thread is calling sem wait and after exiting from the critical section it is calling uh, sem post fine and of course rest of the code is same so let me close and compile this program okay so we need to link it with lp thread okay <clears throat> you see the value of balance is zero so we have successfully solved the critical section problem among cooperating processes using named semaphore. Now let us change gear and talk about the serialization as well. We have discussed this concept in the operating system concept course. Can anybody tell me the output of uh, this multi-threaded program? Hmm. Well, yes, uh, I have created three threads over here uh, each displaying a string and I want the final message should be learning is fun with Arif let us compile and run this program and see the output raise serialize.c ok 
Okay, let me clear screen first and let me show you the code of the program as well. And now let me run this program dot out slash a dot out. You see uh, the output is this thread printed this line first RF part, then this thread conveyed, and then finally we have learning is. Let me run it again. Let me run it again. Now this is learning is RF part fun with. So it is giving different output and this time it is learning is fun with RF part. So this is the actual line which I wanted to, uh, to be printed on screen. So here come the concept of serialization. Uh, let us now see how we can serialize uh, these three statements among the three threads using named semaphores. Once again, I have written a program solution raise serialize dot C. Okay. So over here, you you can see I am uh, I am I'm creating two semaphores sem A and sem B. I am creating them using the sem open call. I am initializing them with the value of 0 because for serialization we normally initialize the semaphore with the value of 0 and inside the thread functions please note that since the value of sem b is 0 through this line will not be executed since the value of sem a is also 0 so this line will not be executed and whenever this function gets executed this line will be printed and after this is printed I have given a sem post on semaphore A so now this will be printed and after this is done I have given a sem post on semaphore B then this will be printed so the output will be learning is fun with RF but I hope I hope uh, you have a fair idea of serialization it is just the proof of the concept using name semaphore sorry no matter how many times I, I run it it will be executed like this let me show you the code and see over here yes let me comment this line I will enable it later Okay, let me uh, let me run it again. Compile it first. Solution serialize dot c hyphen lp thread. So it is great, working fine. No matter how many times I run it, it will give the same output. Let me open the code again and let me show you the files as well. Uh, and for that, I have to put a while one loop over here. Okay, so after uh, all the threads are done, the message is displayed. Uh, we will have a infinite loop, and these semaphores will not be closed, nor they will be unlinked. So they will be existing on on the file system. Let us save and compile this program now and run it. So the output is there. Let me come on this terminal. Let me cd to shm and let me ls. You can see the two semaphores, sem1 and sem2. Remember what I said in uh, a, a bit uh, earlier. That once you create a semaphore, it is created in forward slash div, forward slash shm subdirectory, and the name of the semaphore is preceded with these four characters sem dot. Okay, uh, let us see this sem dot sem one. Well, this is the data file. Let me cat it sem dot sem one. Of course, I can't see the contents. Of course, if you want to see the contents, you can do body. Okay. 
Uh, let me see the PID of the process that has this file open right now using F user. Okay, the PID of the process is 28099, which is holding this semaphore right now, and the owner is Arif. Let us use another command that is ls off and uh, let me check out 28099. Oops, let me shrink it a bit. Okay, fine. So uh, this shows uh, uh, a listing of this process, what all files this process has opened right now. And these are the two files which we are talking about div shm something and div shm something and these are this this is the command name and this is the pid and this is the and user and this is the fd which describes the file type uh, and cwd is current working directory this txt is the code section rtd is the root directory and this is the memory and these are the default descriptors anyway let me clear screen come up over here that we press control c but remember the semaphores still exist and we can remove them using sem.rm command and sem.sem2 and now we are done that is great uh, fine one last thing, uh, dear students, uh, we have seen the solution to the critical section problem as well as we have done serialization among threads. You can do serialization among processes as well. Uh, I just want to touch upon another concept of uh, the counting semaphores. Uh, we have discussed in the operating system concept course that we can use a semaphore to access a shared pool of resources uh, and make it act like a counting semaphore. And in that case, we initialize that semaphore with a value greater than one. Let me show you a code counting sem.c. Oops. Fine. Okay, so uh, over here you can note that we have created the name semaphore uh, using sem open and initialize it with the value of, of five. Uh, well, over here the main thread is uh, creating 10 threads and each thread is calling a function f1. And inside the function f1 over here, every thread first uh, wait on this uh, counting semaphore ctr which is initialized with the value of 5 and then print a message and display the mm, semaphore value using the sem get value call. Well, since the semaphore is initialized with a value of 5, so 5 threads will successfully uh, execute uh, this statement, while the remaining thread 6th onward will block. Let us compile and uh, run this program so that we should have an idea of counting semaphores as well. Hyphen LP thread. I've placed a delay of one second over there so you can see uh, the five threads have executed and the value of the semaphore has gone to zero now the sixth thread seventh thread and all the remaining threads are are blocked okay so let me delete the file uh, related to this mm, let me come up over here and do an ls you can see the semaphore file is there Okay, do make it your habit if you don't delete these files and they exist and you create a semaphore with the same name, uh, it will have the previous value and it, it might conflict with your program logic. Okay, I think you all have a fair idea as to how to use the named semaphore in your programs. Let us fall back to the slides now. Uh, we are done with uh, named semaphore among processes. We are done with serializing threads. We are done with the counting semaphores. Okay, uh, dear students, before we close, let us quickly discuss about unnamed or memory based uh, POSIX semaphores as well. Well, in case if you want to use a memory based semaphores to uh, synchronize the threads, you just need to create a, 
the semaphore has a global variable in the process address space and uh, and it, it it gets shared among the threads in case you want to use a memory based semaphore to synchronize activities of related or unrelated processes uh, then the semaphore must be placed in a shared memory segment and that is uh, shared among the processes okay so instead of uh, sem open we use the sem init call to create an unnamed or memory based semaphore uh, the first argument of course is uh, the sem uh, which is initialized with the value as given in the third argument the second argument is p shared if this is zero then semaphore is shared between the threads of a process and if this is uh, non zero then the semaphore is shared between processes and of course after a successful call to sem init uh, you can always use this semaphore in the sem wait and sem post calls and of course you need to uh, destroy an unnamed semaphore using sem destroy call okay so let us move ahead and see this time the solution of the same problems using unnamed semaphores. Let me show you the solution of threads, but this time we will be using the unnamed semaphores. Uh, this is the same program that we have discussed before. Here we are using this sem init function, and, and, and you see this is a, a global variable mutex because we are going to uh, use it among threads so we just declare it globally and this zero means uh, the value of p shared uh, is zero so that is uh, this semaphore will be shared or used among the threads and since we want to solve the critical section problem solution so we have initialized it with the value of one and hope the rest of the code is simple we are just using sem wait and sem post uh, to handle the critical section problem okay let me run this program now so that is great it is working and we have used these uh, uh, memory based semaphore for handling critical section problem among threads let us uh, see a program that do the same among processes solution race underscore processes dot c well over here the point to be noted is uh, uh, that we have uh, uh, created the balance variable because this has to be shared among the processes so this is created in the shared memory region initialized with the value of zero and since uh, uh, this mutex uh, is also need to be shared among the processes so we have also created memory uh, shared memory for 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 this mutex variable and finally we have used sem init to initialize this mutex variable and uh, the initial value of this uh, mutex variable is one because we want to achieve a mutual exclusion and over here the value is non-zero because we want to use it among processes uh, well rest of the code is same uh, the parent process is forking the child is calling increment and the parent is calling decrement they both execute concurrently the parent waits if it uh, gets free before its child and over here the functions are, are, are same and of course once we are done we need to detach the shared memory segment for the balance as well as the mutex uh, and finally we are we are deleting that shared memory now let us compile this program solution raise processes link it with the threading library let me run it and of course you will see the same result done so just to for completeness let's see the code of serialization among threads using memory based or named semaphores very much similar to the previous one that we have discussed the function codes are same 
the only difference is that I have used SEM in it over here. We have created two unnamed semaphore, initialize them with the value of, of, of zero to achieve serialization. The second argument is zero because we uh, want to use this semaphore among, among threads. Okay. Let me compile this program, serialize.c. So learning is really fun with RF, but let us fall back to the slides. Okay, dear students, uh, this is a home task for you, uh, the barber shop problem. This is a very famous problem. You all must have heard about this problem. The barber shop consists of a barber chair and five waiting chair. So you can see this is a uh, the barber chair which must be held mutually exclusively by a, by a client so we need to achieve mutual exclusion we have a shared pool of resources five chairs so we need to have a counting semaphore over here and uh, moreover whenever uh, the the barber is done cutting the hair of someone he needs to give a signal to someone over here and whenever a customer arrives inside the barber shop and all the chairs are full he will leave and otherwise he will wait. I hope uh, you have a fair idea of the barbershop problem and you should be able to solve it uh, whether using a multi-threaded program or maybe using multi-processing using folk. Okay dear students that is all for today's session. Uh, if you have liked it please subscribe my youtube channel and share it with your friends. See you next time. Wish you all the best, happy learning and Allah Hafiz.